What do you get when you take the speed and security of Linux and put a customized version of KDE on top of it that makes it look like Windows 11 and promises that it can run Windows programs? You get Linux FX 11, and that's what we're taking a look at today on eBuzz Central. This video today is brought to you by the eBuzz Central store. Are you somebody that loves Linux and wants to wear it and show people that you love Linux? Zip on over to the eBuzz Central store. We've got t-shirts, we've got hoodies, tank tops, long sleeve tees. We've got great arch-based products, Debian-based products. We've also got Manjaro-based products. We just added Fedora to our list of products. Linux Mint, Ubuntu, just plain Linux, Kali. If it's okay, if you don't like Linux, not everyone has good taste. We've got hats, phone cases, stickers, mugs, water bottles, steel tumblers. Man, if you're interested in Linux products, zip on over, take a look at the store. And if there's something that you would like to see on the store that's not there, drop that in the comments below. So let's go back on over to the Linux FX website. If you go over to their website, which is linuxfx.org, I'll be sure to include that in the description below. This is what you're met with. It just basically states that it's a fast, stable, and very safe operating system. It's the Microsoft Windows 11 interface with the speed and security of Linux. It says it's got a friendly interface. Android support. One, run Android apps and games. Install thousands of apps via the Play Store. Office 365, 3D games. Microsoft applications. Linux FX natively brings the Edge browser, Teams, Skype, PowerShell, Office Online, Code, and more. Now, I do want to go over this right here. You can pretty much run this on any Linux distribution. You can download it and run it. You can get it from your store you, in Arch. I believe you can get it through the AUR, and they may have it on some official repositories. So that's not a major thing there. The WX desktop interface, which makes it look like Windows 10 and 11. Personal Assistant, Helloa, Linux FX Personal Assistant. It uses Google Assistant technology. So if you're somebody that left Windows because you didn't want to be tracked or you wanted to get away from Google and Microsoft, this is definitely not the distribution for you. And then over here, Linux FX can run .exe and .msi programs natively with a double click as in Microsoft Windows. We're going to test that. We're going to download a program, something light, and just try to run it and see what happens. Then they also have the new release of Linux FX11 Cinnamon. I don't know why they give this the 11 number because it looks like Windows 7. And what is the difference? Because guys, the free edition doesn't give you everything and they expect you to pay for it. All operational features are included with the free edition. Android apps and game support doesn't come with that. WX desktop settings and tools doesn't come with that. Assistant by voice command doesn't come with that. Microsoft Active Directory doesn't come with that. OneDrive in the file manager doesn't come with that. And use of all WX desktop resources is limited for 30 days on the free version. Now, if you go over here, you can pay $35 and you can get the professional version. And then all of this supposedly works. But I will tell you this. I have had viewers that told me that they sent their $35 and never received a key to upgrade to the professional edition. So put that in your mind when you're watching this video. And then down here, it lets you choose your version. So they tell you here everything that you're going to get or not get. And then they tell you here how to pay for it. And then they have a little video on it right here. And then down here, how many users they had worldwide. And then downloads this week. Quite honestly, it's had this same number for the last two months. So I don't know how accurate these numbers truly are. It is based out of Brazil. So just take that into account. And then if you go up top, you do have home, release notes, downloads, forum. You can get support from Telegram, support forum, or submit a support ticket. And then, of course, contact. And then, of course, over here, you've got Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. What we're going to do right now is zip on over to the Linux FX desktop. And if you download Linux FX, throw it on a USB or put it into a virtual machine. This is the screen you're met with, if you notice. You get a notification right off the bat. You are using the free version of Linux FX. WX desktop tools are running in trial mode. Support our project by donating an amount and earn a license to continue using WX desktop and all its features. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that notification. This is an Ubuntu-based distribution. And as you can see, right off the bat, it really does have a Windows 11 look and feel to it. 
You do have a single panel down on the bottom. You do have some desktop icons up here. You've got Trash. You've got the Linux FX Android. You've got Install System. And then, of course, Microsoft Edge. And if you come down on the bottom right, you've got your notifications, date and time. Then you've got your hidden icons. And you open that up. You've got your notifications, K-Organizer, Clipboard, Night Color Control, Lock Key Status, KDE Connect, if you want to use that with your cell phone. And then, of course, Vaults. Internet, most recent USB device, battery level, and sound. And then right here, you do have AnyDesk. If you click on that, it'll open up AnyDesk, so that way you can remote into other computers that are on your network. If you choose to, that would be a nice little handy tool to have. And then we can close out of that. And then, of course, let's configure weather report. And let's choose a location. Let's just go Dallas, Texas. There's Iowa, North Carolina. There's Texas. Let's go ahead and select that and apply. And now you've got weather down here, so let's close out of that. And if you click on that, it'll bring your weather forecast up. I do like the theming of it. I do like the way it looks. It looks a little too much like Windows for me, but that's my personal opinion. And then over here, you've got search. I guess you just click on that, and you can type something in here. Let's go ahead and look for files. Android file transfer. So you can do your search right there. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Then you're changing your desktop or workspaces, work areas, widgets. Let's open up widgets. And it's just going to open up your standard KDE widget selector over here. You can pick a widget and either drag it onto your desktop or down here in your panel. Or if you want to get new widgets, you can go up here. Let's go ahead and just close out of that. Looks like you've got Teams. Let's open that up. And there is Microsoft Teams. You can get started right there if you'd want to. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Dolphin File Manager. When you open it up, you'll see that they've skinned it to make it look a lot like the Windows File Manager. But at the same time, this just, you know, it feels weird using it for the simple fact that if you're wanting the functionality of Windows and you're wanting the look of Windows, why not just use Windows? I mean, really, that's my personal opinion. I'm sure some of you out there will disagree with me. If you do, drop that in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the File Manager. And then you've got Microsoft Edge and then, of course, the FX Store. Let's go ahead and open that. And with it being based on Ubuntu, I'm sure it's probably going to be the Discover Software Center. And it's most definitely the Discover Software Center. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Anybody that's familiar with Debian or Ubuntu-based distribution is very familiar with this. You've got your applications here. And then, of course, you could go up top if you wanted to and do a search. If you wanted to look for something like OBS, you could just hit enter. And there's OBS Studio. You could install it from a flat pack. Okay, these are flat packs and not snaps. And just a heads up, if there are people out there who use Ubuntu or use snaps in general, there has been a bug found in it. So you should be getting a security update because it was pretty major. So make sure you stay on top of that if you're using snaps in your distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Discover Software Center. Let's go over here and take a look at their application launcher. And it's definitely got that Windows feel. You got your power on settings, file manager, live user session, and then you've got some pinned apps up here. You've got the system monitor. You've got the Microsoft PowerShell. Let's go ahead and open this up and run an HTOP on it. It does seem a little laggy. I am in a virtual machine, but I use a lot of Linux distros in virtual machines. This one just seems to be a little laggy. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so we can see. I've got three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. And at present, with just the terminal open, we're using about 1.3 gigabytes of RAM. That's pretty heavy, guys. If they're going for that Windows feel and that Windows look and Windows resource usage, it seems like they're definitely hitting the nail on the head, but that's my opinion. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and open the application launcher back up. And let's go ahead and look at all apps. You've got Android, Anti-Micro, AnyDesk, Arc, of course, Cheese, Discover, Emoji Selector, and the scroll on my mouse isn't working. It was, but yes, this is real laggy, guys. But like I said, I'm in a virtual machine. Microsoft Calendar, Microsoft Excel, OneNote, Outlook, People, PowerPoint, PowerShell. And these are all the online versions. These aren't running in Wine or anything like that, guys, so just know that. And then you've got OBS Studio already installed out of the box. OneDrive. And then you have only Office comes as well. So you've got Microsoft Online apps, and then you've got only Office installed out of the box. So you can kind of have a choice on that. Scanlight, Synaptic, it's got Steam. So it does have Synaptic Package Manager. If you're not familiar with that, that's definitely another way to get software, and it's probably my preferred way to get software on Ubuntu-based or Debian-based operating systems. You know, it's got it over here in categories. 
You can always go over here to categories and pick it by category, or you could come up here and do a search for something like Caden Live, hit enter. It would go do the search or not. It didn't bring it up. Let's see OBS, see if it brings up OBS. Okay, so I guess you're just going to have to, let's go try this search and see if that works. Let's try OBS. So it doesn't bring it up. It brings OBS over here, so you'd have to scroll down to find OBS. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that because that's not the way Synaptic usually works on other distros. Uh, but anyway, it does have Synaptic. If this is something you're interested in downloading and running, it does have Synaptic, so it's very easy to install software. So let's go ahead and close that. Now, next thing we want to do is I want to test their statement that it can run .exe files. So I'm going to do something rather easy. I think I'm going to download two programs. I'm going to download... Qubit Torrent and Rufus and see if we can get those to run. Okay, I guess we're doing the first start with Microsoft Edge. So give me a moment. Okay, so that is done. Doing all that beginning stuff for Microsoft tracking. Let's go ahead and try Rufus. Let's look that up and we'll go to their official website and we'll go ahead and download it. Edge does seem to be running okay, but the scroll is really laggy. So let's go ahead and pull up Rufus. You feel right at home here because it seems like ads pop up everywhere. Okay, so we have Rufus. Now let's go find Qubit Torrent. I'm doing two lightweight applications just to see if they will work. Let's go to download, 32-bit, 64-bit installers, and then we will download it. There it is for 64. Let's go ahead and highlight that, download that puppy. Okay, it's downloading in the background. When it gets done, we'll close out of this, and we'll do the ultimate test and see if it does run .exe files. So we will close that. We'll go down to Dolphin, open that up. All right, downloads. We will go with Rufus first. Rufus.exe. Okay, the wine configuration in home Linux FD is being updated. Please wait. Wine could not find a wine mono package which it needed for .net applications to work correctly. Wine can automatically download and install it for you. So let's go ahead and install it. I have enough space. So we shall see. It's taking a little longer than expected. Your home folder is running out of disk space. You have 179 megabytes remaining. That's odd. I issued it 20 gigabytes. So let's close that. And we're waiting. Okay, it's being updated. Please wait. Okay, guess it's done updating. Let's try this again. Okay, so that isn't... Well, let's try Qubit Torrent, guys. And nothing's happening. Okay, I issued 20 gigabytes to this virtual machine. And for some reason, every time I try to run a Windows.exe, it's telling me my home folder is running out of space. So this isn't surprising. I've had people that have installed this on bare hardware that have tried to run .exes, and it just didn't work. Now, I know you guys are out there. You're going to tell me you know this. You're a Linux user. You know that there's issues with running Windows programs out of the box. But let's zip back over to the website real quick, guys. Okay, if you scroll right down here, it says .exe and .msi applications. Linux FX can run them natively with a double click as in Microsoft Windows. This is what people read, and then people scroll down here and see that they can get a free edition or a professional edition for $35. Honestly, if you're going to spend $35, you can update to Windows 11 for nothing if that's what you want. If you want the Microsoft functionality and you want the Windows 11 look, I would say do that. Don't come over to Linux and try to force feed a Microsoft experience on something that was never meant to be like a Microsoft experience. Just my personal opinion. So what's my view on Linux FX? It's not my cup of tea. Maybe there's somebody that's watching this video out there that would say, yes, I like this. This is what I want to try. Just be leery. Some of the things on the website aren't true. And I've had people in the past that have paid for the professional key and never received it. That's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Let me know. Is this something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, take for a test drive? Put that in the comments below. Also, don't forget to go over and take a look at the eBuzz store. There's a lot of great Linux merch over there. Go check it out. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, mugs. If there's something that you want that's not there, let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. 
Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.